And our dinosaur of the day is Torvosaurus gurnii. Torvosaurus means savage lizard, and gurnii is named after the paleo artist James Gurney, who created Dinotopia, which was published in 1992. That was by far my favorite dinosaur book when I was a kid, so I think this is pretty awesome. Torvosaurus gurnii is a new species that was found in Portugal. It lived on the Iberian Peninsula, which, if you're familiar with your European geography, is what is now known as Spain, Portugal, Andorra, and parts of France. And it was there about 150 million years ago during the Jurassic. Torvosaurus was dug up in 2003 by an amateur paleontologist who found the jawbone, and they also found the shin bone, teeth, and parts of the tail vertebrae. Christoph Hendricks, who was a PhD student at the New University of Lisbon in Portugal, found Torvosaurus gurnii while he was studying what scientists at the time thought were bones of a Torvosaurus tanneri. Now we know that Torvosaurus tanneri is a related species, but it lived in North America's Rocky Mountains during the Jurassic, not in the Iberian Peninsula. The study about Torvosaurus gurnii was published in the Public Library of Science in March 2014. So there's two species of Torvosaurus, Torvosaurus tanneri and Torvosaurus gurnii, and Torvosaurus tanneri was found first and named in 1979. Torvosaurus tanneri was a large, heavy, bipedal carnivore that could grow to 33 feet. It was one of the largest of its time. But there's some key differences between the two Torvosauruses, which is how they realized that it was a new species they found. Torvosaurus gurnii has fewer teeth in its upper jaw, and the bone and tail vertebrae also are a little bit different. So Torvosaurus tanneri has more than 11 teeth, and Torvosaurus gurnii has fewer than 11 teeth and their mouth bones also have different shapes. Torvosaurus gurnii had four inch long teeth that were blade shaped, and they had sharp claws on their forearms that they used to dig into prey, and it was about 32 feet long. The ecosystem for Torvosaurus was probably like the Serengeti. According to Thomas R. Holtz Jr., there were a lot of small, medium, and large carnivores living alongside each other, just like how modern lions, spotted hyenas, leopards, and jackals currently live alongside each other. Where Torvosaurus was found in Portugal has a lot of fossils, and it's pretty scenic with lots of cliffs over a shoreline. In the Jurassic, it also had a large river and lots of vegetation, which means a very diverse set of dinosaurs lived there. So Torvosaurus gurnii may have been the biggest predator in Europe, at least, that's been discovered so far. And it probably grew so big because it was surrounded by so many herbivores, such as stegosaurs and sauropods. So Torvosaurus probably hunted large prey, but much like... Tyrannosaurus rex and other large carnivores, it may have also been an opportunistic scavenger. Torvosaurus was smaller than T. rex, but it had a very powerful bite nonetheless, and it also lived about 80 million years before T. rex, but it's not an ancestor to T. rex. They evolved what they say is convergent evolution, meaning that they both evolved to a similar type of animal and size and shape, but they're not closely related. So the paleontologist Holtz Jr. said Torvosaurus gurnii was a big bruiser predator, which means it used brute force to kill its prey instead of using its speed or element of surprise. It probably took a big bite out of the prey and, and waited for it to bleed to death, unlike T-Rex, which probably would have crushed the prey with its jaws. And the interesting thing about this discovery is that it changes the way scientists view dinosaurs in Europe during the Jurassic period. Before Torvosaurus gurnii, it was thought that most of the dinosaurs in Europe were dwarf-sized because they evolved to be smaller to fit on all the islands that formed Europe back then. Torvosaurus gurnii was part of the group Megalosauridae, if you have no idea what a megalosaur is, you should watch the TV show Dinosaurs. Earl Sinclair is supposed to be a megalosaur, although I'm sure he's not very accurate. <laughs> That's true, because he walks a lot like Barney instead of the way a dinosaur probably walked. <laughs> the Megalosauridae family was named in 1869, and it was what is called a 
quote unquote waste basket group, which means that a large variety of unrelated species were kind of put into there, probably before the scientists figured out where they belonged. Some examples include Indosaurus and Velociraptor. The family lived in the mid to late Jurassic about 170 to 148 million years ago. And they lived in North America, Europe, South America, and Africa. They were cousins of Spinosauridae, and there are some similarities between their appearances. Megalosauridae includes the Afrovenator, Debriosaurus, and Torvosaurus. And the group has been brought into question several times for where the lines should be drawn about what is included in Megalosauridae, or even if it should be called Megalosauridae. So Thomas R. Holtz offered an alternate group definition as all dinosaurs which are more closely related to Megalosaurus than to Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, or modern birds. Like we said, Spinosaurus was a cousin, so if you look at the family tree, you could kind of just draw a line between the two and use that as your dividing point. But other scientists have come up with alternative definitions. Some don't like the name Megalosauridae and propose the name Torvosauridae instead, and still other names have been thrown out, but Megalosauridae is the one that seems to be the favored name still. Megalosaurs were primitive theropods, and their sizes ranged from small to large, but they all had sharp teeth and three claws on each hand. These big predators are usually harder to find than their prey, so there's not too much known about megalosaurs, but they did look similar to T-Rex, and they may have been covered in proto-feathers. 